Well, good morning. It's good to see all of you. If you're able, go ahead and stand to your feet. Proverbs 17 uh, talks and tells us that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bone. And uh, last week we introduced a new song called House of the Lord. And in the chorus it says, there's joy in the house of the Lord. And so no matter what you're dealing with today, no matter what you're facing or going through, I would encourage you this morning to, to allow yourself to be filled with the joy of the Lord. Amen. seats this morning. Don't worry.
worry, you'll be getting back up in a few minutes here, folks. So there's a quick pause here. Uh, welcome to American Lutheran Church, 1030 Contemporary Service. If you're new here for the first time, welcome. We're glad to have you here. Folks, keep your eyes open. If you see a new person, welcome them. Love them in, you know, let them know they're, they're, they're welcome here and we appreciate them. All right, so we're getting right down to it here. These are the events that are coming up. Now, there is a class going on this for the next few weeks here, Martin Luther class. Um, it, it's at 9.15. Anybody get down there? A few people? Okay, good. Yeah, see, so you guys got down there. So for future reference, if you come at 9, you could hit the 9.15 Martin Luther Connection class. Uh, to, to The last uh, episode of that's going to be a movie about Martin Luther, so it's going to be a lot of fun. So join us for that. Uh, Grief Share is still accepting people to register. If you, have, if you lost a loved one or know someone who did, go see our table and back and sign up for that class. It's a, it's a national program. It's deep. It's phenomenal, folks. Uh, it will bring some healing or at least start the process for you. Uh, the first class starts Tuesday, October 22nd, so you see why you got to sign up for it, okay? And they'll give you information back there on that. What, what We Believe seminar, Monday, October 28th, 5 p.m. Uh, be there, especially if you have kids, because you can ditch them off with the nursery, all right? And then get dinner, too. So it's a good thing. I mean, come see what that's all about. Uh, prayer workshop is on Saturday, November 2nd, starting at 8. Uh, we're going to have a, a, it's taught by Brenda Stull. She's an author, an award-winning author, uh, RSVP for that. Um, I don't know much more than that, so you're going to have to come see the show, you know, if you really want to get what's going on. So, all right, and then finally, uh, don't forget to pray as the elections are coming up. You know, get down on your knees, do the whole thing, you know, and get serious with God. So, uh, placing that before you, that's all I got, folks. Please stand and greet each other in the name of the Lord. Oh, yeah.
thankful to be in the house of the Lord this morning, church? Sing this with me. You know, sometimes in life we, uh, we go through difficult things and we go through trials. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that the Lord always promises to be there with us. Amen. Show you my way. 
you hear us talk about the love of God a lot around here. And you hear us sing about it a lot. And I believe it's vital for us as believers to uh, really experience the love of God. And, and when I say experience, I don't mean just know about it, but to experience it. Because I heard a minister say years and years ago that you can't give what you don't have. And if each and every day we're not experiencing the love of God, how much he cares about us, how much he wants the best for us, then it's going to be hard for us to love on others because we're lacking in that department. And so this morning, I want you to to take a moment and with your heart and with your head this morning say, Lord, I want to experience your love in a new way. And don't just say it to go through the motions to say it, but from your heart, mean it. Because I believe as you do that, that the Lord will soften your heart. You'll begin to to feel his presence. And then when we're experiencing how much God cares about us, then it's real easy for us to go out and be salt and light to a hurting world. Because we're experiencing how much God cares. And so when we, we go out and we talk to people, not only do they see fruit in our lives, but we can tell them, We are experiencing the love of God and we want you to experience this love. So we're going to sing this and I want you to just close your eyes for a moment. Yeah, he loves us. Make it personal, how he loves me. How he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. One more time. Yeah, he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Amen. You're thankful for his love this morning, church. Amen. Go ahead and take your seats. Amen. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Oh, boy. Ooh, so the Anglicans had an election for the bishop, so we had to head during the week uh, west, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it was one of those moments. Um, we saw Fallbrook, where Pastor Mark's from. Um, we know why he moved here now, so that was good. I'm sorry, if you're from California, I'm hitting it pretty hard. I know, I know. All right, so let's get to the scripture passage today, folks. Mark 10:35 through 45. <clears throat> then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you, he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them and said, 
You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. All right. As a teenager, every morning driving down, down into Colorado Springs, you'd look across and you would see the Air Force Academy Chapel just white as can be sitting there on the side of the hill. Pretty cool. So um, as a kid, as a teenager in high school, I had the ambition, and the ambition to be a fighter pilot in the United States Air Force. I mean, I was going to be riding a, a F-15 a Strike Eagle uh, through the... the through Europe, you know, during World War III, I was all ready to do this. Um, me and 600 other uh, high school students, you know, seniors graduating, all trying to compete for one congressional uh, appointment. And it was like, wow, what, run the numbers on that. Um, the sad thing is, is uh, well, I didn't, I didn't make <laughs> I didn't make it, obviously, because <laughs> I'm not in an F-15 right now. But, um, but no, one of the guys from our class did. And three weeks in, he quit. And we were so mad. We were like, really? Really, dude? I would have kept going. And you wasted an entire slot. It was kind of frustrating. Uh, but really, that kind of uh, drive to do what I wanted to do. I mean, I, I, I was looking at, you know, there was a big ambition there. There was leadership. I mean, I always got into classes. And part of our leadership uh, instruction was, uh, had a really good uh, professor who was like, find a historical figure and kind of model their leadership. Someone you really respect and was successful in leadership. So I, I picked probably the best you could in you know, my situation, uh, George S. Patton. Oh, yeah, St. George, right? I mean, come on, it makes sense. I mean, Chappie, yeah, Patton was one of my heroes. So I'm like, all right, let's look at his leadership style, what he did, and really got into it. I mean, wow, it's incredible. And he was, he was a, he was a leader who got down with the troops. He really did, all right? Uh, there's nothing like be, being on the line and you're doing hard work, and you're grabbing a sandbag, you turn, and there's the boss right there. The full bird colonel, hey, with his hands out, come on, chap, throw it to me. And you toss it, and you're like, now that's a leader out there getting dirty with the troops. And Patton was that kind of guy. And like I said, just following what he had done, his drive, his, his continual movement up, his ambition to get to the top and be the best general, that was something I looked at very, very importantly. Uh, and if you, if you really track with it, folks, when we as a country went into North Africa in that Second World War, remember that? All right. Uh, our first battle in North Africa, you realize we got beat very, very bad. Kazarine Pass, it was called. We got torched. I mean, it was, it was embarrassing, folks. I mean, you're like, are you talking about the same USA? Yes, I'm talking about the same USA. It was until they brought Patton over, and then he kind of got things right, and then we moved like, you know, through the panzers like butter after that uh, across North Africa into Sicily. He's like, hey, Montgomery, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to go the long way to Salerno, and you got the short way. I'm going to beat you if he did it. I mean, all the way across, and then you think that he would have led the D-Day things, right? Oh, no, actually, he got more of a compliment because he, he was head of the, the decoy, the, the, the group that was going to cross at Calais, but it really didn't because it was a bunch of paper tanks and stuff. But they had his name attached to it, and the Germans were scared. So they put all their stuff over in Calais, and the Normandy was like, well, not a cakewalk, but you know. I mean, and then they bring him over, and Patton just moves across France. I mean, just accomplishing phenomenal ground, which uh, very few generals did in that manner. And his ambition actually took him a little further. When we finished it all and he's in Berlin, he wanted to keep going, folks, you know? Imagine, you know, if you kept going, no more Russia, no more... No. <laughs> it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Um, so when it comes to looking at leadership and ambition, let's take a look at that because today's, today's gospel is kind of strange, you know? You got two yahoos there, James and John, right? They're, they're ambitious souls, right? They, they're like, they're looking at sitting next to God and Jesus in the glory up front. I mean, that's like, that's a big step. 
Any of, any of you think about that? You know, sitting up at the front, at the front table in heaven? Ouch, I, yeah, I did. No thanks. No, it probably comes with a lot of work too, you know, a lot of overtime. So you got you to gotta gauge that. No, ambition in general. Uh, healthy ambition, there are three kind of aspects or, uh, to healthy ambition. There's performance ambition, where we want to get to. Growth ambition, how we will need to learn and grow. And achievement ambition, what we want in the form of rewards. All of these have the word we, key, key uh, word in there. We. Ambition gets dangerous when it becomes I. Let's look at that as we go. Now, first and foremost, are you as a person in general or a Christian ambitious? All right. Are you constantly trying to, you know, improve your life, get ahead? I mean, I, some of the best advice was never, never satis be satisfied where you're at. Move forward, move up, continue to do that. And I remember being a private first class in the middle of the whole gaggle. Like, uh, and I'm looking at to the back going like, why do those guys get a stand back there? I want to be bad. I don't want to be stuck in the middle of the gaggle here. And sure enough, you know, later as I became an officer, I wasn't. It was pretty cool. It's like, wow, this is nice. This is, you know. But we're encouraged as we're growing up, as we're going through high school, at different events, you know, our jobs, to move forward, get ahead a little bit. Move to the top in your circles. So is ambition healthy? Healthy. Well, here, I mean, to be honest, ambition is natural. It really is, and it is good. It, uh, there's a goodness to it. It instills in us and motivates us. It moves us. It helps us get jobs done sometimes, jobs that other people don't want to do. It really is something that is positive, okay? However, you saw the however coming, right? However, in the spiritual aspect of it, We've got to understand that we're human beings, right? And we all are subject to the incident, the big incident. Do you remember the incident? We don't, but we hear about it all the time. The incident back in Genesis, right? The whole fall thing, you know, we don't like to talk about, you know, the fall of man. The sin, the sin comes into the world. That kind of clouds things for us here and puts a few hurdles in our, in our way. And sometimes ambition can be unhealthy and actually have a hurdle involved in it. All right, so track with this. This is the negative attached to it, the hurdle, so to speak. Ambition is, a, is problematic when it speaks to self and self alone. All right? It's, it's called greed is what it's called. That's the sin that get, we get caught up in. And greed is the act by which you pursue to get for yourself, the act where you pursue to get for yourself rather than pursue something for your life which brings glory to God. Make sense? Make sense? Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's what greed's gonna do here. It is the cyclical, it is cyclical. The more you have the more you want, the more you pursue. It just happens that way. You get a little bit of money, it's good. Hey, I want a little bit more. Hey, I want even more. And pretty soon you got a lot and you're kind of a dirt bag for it. And it's like, wow, whoa, what just happened, all right? You know, that's how it, it sneaks up on you. It really does. If, if you're a leader, it, it's like a little bit of power. Huh, I felt good. I made those people do what I wanted them to do. It kind of sickles more. I want to see more people do what I want them to do. And pretty soon you're running over them. You're squashing them in the ground. That's not good. I mean, yeah, you may have got ahead and you may have gained some rank or advanced, but whoa, what's going on in the process there? Hold on there. Hold on. Folks, when, when, we, we tend to, when that happens, we tend to step on people for our own good and push God to the side. And that never works out well. It really doesn't. It's when you push God to the side, watch out, folks. You could be getting yourself in one of those red zones where flags should be going up, saying, nope, stop, don't go here. All right, so in today's gospel, wow, in today's gospel, we have two very ambitious uh, disciples, right? Right? James and John sitting there going like, hey, you know what? We're probably the best there is here. You know, the other 10, they're a bunch of losers, man. Let's go talk to Jesus firsthand here. Let's, let's see if we could be right next to him, right? And they walk up. All right, verse 35. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, 
we want you to do for us what, whatever we ask. Whoa, right then and there. That's, that's, yeah, think about that. For, we want you to do what we, we tell you to do, Jesus. All right, never mind the others, you know, those losers. You do this for us. We want to sit at your right and left side. I mean, come on, you can already see the problem right there. I mean, that's an awkward moment, all right? Thank God Jesus is loving and God, right? So he could discern probably their hearts. They're a little misled, but he does have the right answers and starts to guide us in the direction we need to go. Because like I said, that's not good. What they did was just not good. And the other, well, we're going to see what happens with the other 10, all right? All right. So Jesus, Jesus handles this in a very loving and caring way. Mark 10, 38, he says back to them, you don't know what you're asking. Hello, McFly, this is, you're, you, this is not good. You don't, you're not tracking with life here. Let me educate you here and guide you a little bit here, all right? Can you drink the cup that I am gonna drink or be baptized with what I'm gonna be baptized with? And see, they hadn't been paying attention like the rest of the disciples, right? He's been telling them, hey, the Son of Man is going to go to the cross and die for the sins of the world. Take the sin of the world on my shoulders. It's not going to be fun, all right? And here's these disciples thinking, oh, yeah, we can do it. No. Wrong answer. Now, they do end up being martyrs anyway. I mean, they, they do end up being faithful apostles, strong apostles, but they do follow in the footsteps, not the sins of the whole world, obviously, but they do follow in that in, in, in step there. We are all ambitious, but we are, we are to respond with an ambition that is focused, all right, on being all that God has called us to be, living for him to be servants of all, because that's how Jesus responds to it. To these two guys, these two upstarts, these two, he probably loved them, they were part of the guys. But here's the problem, and what led to this here is in verse 41, when the 10 heard about this, all right, that's something, folks, if you've ever been in any organization here, and you've said something you shouldn't say, and other people find out, all right, technically, the other 10 should have taken the two back behind the olive tree, you know, and give him a little education, a little, you know, kind of old school style, all right? Dude, this is not right, okay? Fists had been a fine. It's just the way they did it back then. No, no, it didn't. They went before Christ, and they're like, God, Jesus, what's going on? I mean, you're going to let these guys sit on both sides? That's what we're hearing. So when the 10 heard this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who were regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must first be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be the slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come, did, uh, did not come to be served, but to serve. He flipped it, right? I've told you, he flips it. He flipped culture right there. Completely opposite of what the world does. Jesus says, nope, you want to be great. You got to get on your knees and serve. You got to get in the dirt. You got to throw sandbags, all right? That's what Jesus is saying here. And it's very, very important to understand and grasp this, all right? This is ambition backwards according to the world, but it's the right way to go. All right, folks, the earlier, this, the earlier this year in the summertime, do you remember what we had the Olympics, right? Right, the Olympics? Other than that first day and the whole boxing thing, right? I mean, I mean, it was pretty good. I mean, well, it's the Olympics, right? And the Olympics full, is full of athletes with ambition. They're like, yeah, I want to be the greatest, the best. They're always moving forward, improving themselves, right? And they do. They want to stand on the very top one, the one with the one on it, okay, for the gold. And they want to bite it, you know, make sure it's real gold, and they want to rejoice, spray champagne, right? That's what it's all about there. Um, however, if you really want to learn the true uh, spiritual uh, meaning that we're trying to get to here, don't look at the Olympics, all right? Yes, it's very self-driven, all right? You will run over other people. You'll even sometimes probably take out a knee every once in a while, right? It's been plenty of time for that, folks. Plenty of time has gone by, all right? <laughs> 
If you really want to see ambition at its best, the, the, the servant like the Lord's, the Lord's type, go to the Special Olympics. We would always be assigned once a year to go to the local Special Olympics. And you'd go, you'd go with a few, with all the soldiers. And you had to adopt one of the kids, and they'd be your kid, and you'd cheer for them. You'd get them to the events, right? Oh, it was amazing. Well, there was this one, it was the 40 yard dash. And our kid was in it, and we all lined up and we're watching. And you're cheering your kid, yeah, go. So sure enough, the gun goes off, and all these kids go, you know, just moving. And it's slow, it's slow, they're moving. About five yards in, this kid face plants just right down on the track. Boom! And everybody's like, oh, ouch, that's got to hurt. And, and, and the other kids are still going. And, but they're still cheering. I mean, we're coming from the other direction here. We want our kid, come on, keep going, keep running. Well, one of the kids stops and turns around. And you're like, no, don't stop. You got to keep going. And then another kid stopped and turned around. And everybody's freaking out because who? someone's got to win, right? You're like, this is not how it's supposed to work. And you're tempted to run out there on the track and move your kid along. You know, but they're all stopping. And we're all scratching our head going, what is going on? Each of those kids out there running turned around and walked the other direction. No, it's the wrong direction. They went back to the kid who was slowly getting up. They picked up the kid and all walked together the 40 yards to the finish line and all crossed literally at the same time. And your jaws drop down. In fact, you're not just jaw drop down. You are in tears because you came to understand what just happened. They all went back for the kid who fell because they cared for the kid and he deserved to cross the line as well. Wow, boom! That's a spiritual message right there. That's ambition. That's true ambition. Helping the other person. Wow. When your ambitions turn from satisfying your own wants to that of attending to the needs of others, to be a servant to all, folks, that's the mark of Christian maturity. That's the mark that shows you've made it past just the simple things, right? The milk, you are now moving on to the greater things. You are starting to become a mature Christian, the mark of a true leader. I've been through many, many good officers in my life, many bad officers too, all right? And the good ones always had the people, the men, the other people in their minds. As they would move up, they were serving us and helping us along. The other guys with stars in their eyes, they were the ones who were stomping on people. It was all about them, 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 and it was frustrating to work for one of those. But to work for the true leader, man, what a, I, it, you gave, you did stuff for them because you loved them, because they loved you back and they were, they were for you. It, were, it was beautiful how the balance worked. It was beautiful. The mark of a true leader. Our ambition should be focused on something far greater than ourselves. An ambition focused on others, on the kingdom of God. Now, we have a term in the army that we use in this situation. No one left behind. It's a pretty good term. It really, it really, really is. I mean, and, and, it's, it, and it's in the creed that all the soldiers must sit down and learn. No one left behind. I'm going to scroll up to it here. I, I won't get too involved in the creed, man. It's pretty cool, though. I mean, you'd be like, whoa, that's intense. All right. But this is what, these are the value systems that these, we, we, we put into these men and, and women, you know, as they go. And this is at the lowest level. And hopefully as they go up, they bring it to the highest level. I will always place the mission first. You could actually do a Christian version of this, too. So I will always place the mission first. I will always place God first. Pretty cool, all right. I will never accept defeat. Uh, duh, folks, you shouldn't, uh, you're Christians. Jesus has won the victory. Don't accept defeat. I will never quit, right? And then, suddenly, I will never leave a fallen comrade. And you could see the, and you see it anyway. I mean, they actually put it in the movies, which is a shock, you know, to show something good. 
you know, the, the, they're moving through the battlefield, right? And then Bob gets hit and he goes down, right? And they keep going. No, there's like three guys running out and they're dragging him and the dude's on the radio. We need a medevac now. And the helicopter's got a smoke going, right? People are covering fire and they get him off the field. And you're like, yeah, yeah. And then you, oh, the battle. We got to get back to the battle, you know? Then you get back to the focus. You see, I, I love the one of the, the <laughs> There's a guy carrying another guy, right? And the dude who's the wounded guy is actually doing the shooting. You know, He's not going to leave him behind, but he's going to do his part. Never leave a fallen com. Folks, never leave a fallen Christian. You see what we're getting at here? You see what we're getting at here? Every single day. Well, first and foremost, all right? First and foremost, Romans 3.23 tells us all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So that means at any time, place, there's always someone who could be wounded, right? The world's messy. The world's not going to slow down, folks, for you, all right? It's going to hit you on all sides at a, at a constant. Even when you think you're on track with everything, oh, upside the head, it's going to knock you, all right? Everybody goes through that. We all move through problems in our life, through drama, through situations. And as we look around us, we got to pay attention. It's not about us. It's about the people around us, all right? Because we're doing this as a group, as a church, as a team. And as we move through life, and you see someone go down, and they go down hard because they're a good person. They may be a pastor, an elder, or, you know, on the council. Wow, he just went down. Let me get my cell phone, right? No. Well, that's how they do it. You, you, you see something, you put them on tick a talk You got to do tick a talk here. Yeah, you got to do the video. But uh, what do you do? You run over, you grab them, you, 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 you bring them along. You call out medic, in this case, Jesus. Right? That's what we're called to do. That's how we serve each other. That's how we truly do what, what God has called us to do. And that shows, us, that shows us the fruit. That shows the fruit we have in our lives. Again, it's not us. It's Jesus, and it's those around us. This is such a cool aspect to understand. Uh, I mean, and, and we always talk about the Great Commission. Go out and make disciples. Yes, we want you to do that. But we also want you to be cognizant of everybody else out there on the, field, on the field, so to speak, on the battlefield. So you're going to be going through life. I guarantee you, this week it could happen, folks. All right? You're going to be moving through and you're going to be praying. You're going to be, just as I told you, you're going to be praising God in your car as you drive. You pray for the guy who cut you off. Lord bless him. Lord bless him, right? You're going to get to work and someone's going to walk up to you and their face is going to be downtrodden. They just heard the worst news of their life. And they look at you. They look at you. That's not the time to get scared and go like, oh my God, what's going on? I mean, we're giving you the easy part, right? This, technically, if you go this route, it's the easy. The commission stuff's tough. You got to talk to people. You understand that, right? And tell people about Jesus. That could be sometimes embarrassing, all right? All right? It shouldn't be. This is the easy part. This is something. Just opening up your heart with the compassion. And all you really got to say if it comes down, I will pray for you, brother. Or give them a hug. Give them a hug. All right, folks, that's what basically the gist of this whole story is about. We're not to be worried about who's sitting at the front table when we get to heaven. Like I said, it's going to probably be kind of, yeah, yeah, a lot of work. All right, now it'd be cool to be up there with Jesus, but he's going to be chilling with you anyway, folks. So don't worry. So on this trek, don't worry about yourself. Place die to self when it comes down to it. Leave no fellow Christian behind. All right, amen. Let's wrap it. Let's wrap it. Let's get the band in here because they're going to they're gonna put some little background music in as we go into communion here, folks. Are you ready for it? Let's do it. Jake, give us a little E-flat, brother. I just say, you know, I just say notes. I have no idea what they do, so. All right, folks, please stand.
Folks, please join me in prayer here. Almighty God, we thank you and praise you for this day, for this opportunity to come before you, to come to church, Lord. Lord, to be called into Christian maturity and to serve others, Lord, as you have served us and love us. Uh, we understand, though, there are some problems, Lord. We are sinners, and uh, we just pray that you would search our hearts as we, as we come and say, Lord, forgive me for all that I have done against you and my neighbor. Wash me and cleanse me with your blood. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now track with this, folks. Jesus Christ died for your sins. You are forgiven. Amen. amen. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And folks, as Christ our Savior has taught us, join me, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Folks, come to the altar for all is now ready.
Amen. Well, if you, you will go ahead and stand to your feet, we're going to end in worship. Are you thankful for the grace of the Lord? Church, may the blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you forever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.